Special thanks to our promotional partners at the American Philatelic Society. The APS is the largest stamp collecting organization in the world, supporting collectors of any level worldwide. For more information about membership and APS services, visit stamps.org. I'm Charles Epting from H.R. Harmer in New York City. And I'm Michael Cortese, Noble Spirit in Pittsfield, New Hampshire. And this is Conversations with Philatelists. So, Charles, today is an interesting episode because I don't think we've done one quite like this before. We're speaking with Mike Hines, um, the board member of the pre cancel Study Society. And and basically today you you proposed this idea because you guys sell a lot of pre cancels on eBay. We sell mm-hmm. pre cancels at auction, mm-hmm. and you really wanted to get to the bottom of why do these things bring so much money? Why yeah. you know why you pre cancels um, are are I think misunderstood and perhaps a bit misrepresented. Mm-hmm. And I think it's great that I I know a little bit. I I have a, a side collection of them on my own, but. I think it's good that we bring in an expert to sort of set the record straight and tell yeah. us what these are and why people care about these, to it, be quite honest. It's not only just, he's not only just an expert, he's a dealer as well. So not only does he study them, not only is he on the board for the pre cancel Study Society, he also sells them. He's um, got skin in the game. He yes. needs to know what these things are worth <laughs> to make money. Um, right. So, you know, he, so no, I, I think this will be really interesting because, again, I, I it took me a while to understand mm-hmm. um what pre cancels were, and I try and explain them to people. Um, and uh, a lot of times, it's something that people may have seen on letters growing up and not realized what the purpose was. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I, I think, it'll be, and and you're right. The, you know, we, when you texted me, we're getting crazy prices for pre cancels on eBay. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the one hand, I was surprised because you don't think pre cancels bring good money, but then uh, you know, I, I realized that there's a, a huge, a, a sizable uh, segment of the the hobby that focuses on these things. And there are some very rare ones. There's ones yeah. that are just as rare as the rarest U S stamp. There's pre cancels that are orders of magnitude rarer than the inverted Jenny. And obviously right. we're not talking about things on that same level, but these are genuine rarities mm-hmm. in some cases. And, uh, well, let's hear about them today. I'm sure Mike has I've... a lot to talk to us, uh, about, and I, we, we've got some questions for him and, uh, let's bring him on. This should be a good one. Yeah. Let's bring him in. Here we go. Hi, Mike. Hi, Hi, Michael. Hi, Charles. How are you? Uh, Good. How about yourself? Good. Thanks for um, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for uh, for meeting with us and agreeing to do this, agreeing to talk to us. Sure, no problem. Looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. So it um, it we'll just jump right into it. Um, We're pretty interested about this this topic. I mean, I know personally for us here, um, we sell a lot of pre cancels and they uh, they do quite well. So we were kind of just hoping to do an episode on uh, on pre-cancels, talk a little bit about the desirability of them in the last 10 plus years. I don't know if their increase has been growing but even before that and steadily growing in those 10 years, their demand for prices, collectors, everything kind of like that. Um, but we thought you'd be the perfect guest because not only uh, do you know them so well, but you also sell them. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit ab- about that, uh, about what, what you do with the um, Pre-Cancel Study Society and, and your um, selling in pre-cancels? Sure. I, so I've been in the society for about 30 years, believe it or not. Um, kind of after I got a job, I got bored with, with regular stamps and, you know, they got too expensive. And I think you'll hear this as a theme of pre-cancel collectors is... They're very inexpensive and somebody at a local club showed me, you know, more about them. And it was something I didn't really know anything about. So uh, about 30 years ago, I started going to the meetings and then I went to the national convention one year after joining and becoming a member. And that's really when I learned a lot more because pre cancels are a pretty technical topic and they all look the same. So, yeah, <laughs> unless you have some guidance a little bit, then, you know, they're kind of tough to get started. And so around that time, um, the, I worked at Intel and the World Wide Web was starting up and we got on earlier than that even. So I 
brought my idea of starting a web page for the PSS. Oh, that must have been like 96. And people, it was a little too early. People didn't know what I was talking about. So I just decided to do it myself. So I made the web page. They're pretty easy. Even back then, they weren't that hard. It, they were simpler times, you know. Um, so I set up a web page, kind of gave it to the PSS, and they took it. And I've been the webmaster ever since. Um, I started selling on eBay around that time as well. And selling mostly pre-cancels and perkins, but still working until last year i retired from intel and i started selling full time so since that time i've gotten more into bureaus and i started a hip stamp um store just to sell bureaus because bureaus are the way most people get started with pre cancels and they're in scott they're kind of mentioned in scott and so people kind of see that and it's the hook so and that's for, for Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was going to say for, for the un, uninitiated, I guess, uh, there, there's two types of pre cancels, bureaus and locals. This is my remedial understanding. Um, the bureaus were printed by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing in Washington, D.C. and distributed to the post offices, what, whereas the locals were um, uh, either you know press printed or hand stamped or whatnot at the individual post office. Um, so, so the bureaus, uh, when you say that's a, an easy entry point, um, my understanding is that there's a finite number of bureau pre-cancels. Um, you know, the locals, people were sort of doing things on their own, from what I understand. But the bureaus, there are X amount. There's the common ones. There's the rare ones. You can buy an album. You can buy a checklist. And it seems like a good starting point because you're right. When you collect stamps to a certain point, then you, you're you never going to fill the C3A gap. So you, you look for something that you can spend a little bit of money on getting a lot of stamps initially. And there are still those holy grail bureau pre-cancels and local pre-cancels. But it seems to me that it really is a nice next step. Again, you've got your Scott National Album taken as far as you can go. What's the next thing to amass? And and again, um, can you talk a little bit about the, the difference between bureaus and locals, at least in terms of the market, do most people collect both? Do most people focus on one or the other? What are the sort of common collecting methods of pre-cancels? So, yeah, you summarized it pretty well. You know, pre-cancels were made to mostly for bulk mailers to lower the cost and, and improve the efficiency. And they were started actually before the first U.S. stamp. There was a local from Hale & Company that you probably seen um, that was pre-canceled, you know, in 1843. And they were used um, in those years mostly as silent pre-cancels because they didn't have a town or or a state. And that's usually how you see them. When people think of pre-cancels, they think of two lines with the state and the town in between. Um, so bureaus were kind of a later thing. In between those dates, around 1912, or so they, the post office started issuing devices to the local post offices and had rules about um, how to make pre-cancels and how to order devices. And the locals that you talk about are those devices. They also use printed, some are printed and some are hand stamped. Most are hand stamped actually, but um, so they were used by bulk mailers for the most part. So then when bureaus came along, that was the next level of efficiency because now that those bureaus were made while the stamp was being made. They actually used the Stickney um, rotary press um, eventually after the first experimentals to be able to print, you know, the orders that would come in had to be half a million stamps or more. So that's your that's where the large quantities and you know I'm sure the thing about pre cancels is they're very most of them are very common like ninety percent are worth less than a dollar at least bureaus but like you said there's only about ten thousand different bureaus on with a different um, town on them so. And, the th and that's on a different stamp. So those combination of pre-cancel with town, there's 10,000 different ones, which sounds like a lot, but just in the local pre-cancels, there's 40,000 devices. 
Mm. So you multiply that times, I don't know, 100, 1,000, and now you're talking millions. And that's kind of one of the frustrating things for, um, I guess, normal stamp collectors is they want like a list of everything, and there really is no list. One of the, um, the new... One thing that's been generating a lot of interest recently is the, a list has been put together by the PSS of all pre-cancels before 1922. So there are we have catalogs that you can, you know, see how much each stamp with that particular pre-cancel is worth. So to answer your question, sorry, I kind of go pretty <laughs> pretty long. To answer your question more, people start with bureaus usually because there's an album, there's a catalog that shows the price of every stamp. But the town and type that lists all the types and locals, there's no such real complete listing. So um, people get are, you know, they they don't like that as much because it's not as well defined. Whereas this album, they can find the stamp and put it in and they're mm -hmm. all pictured. So you say about 90% of them are worth under a dollar. That remaining 10%, what what makes them valuable, really? Say somebody inherits a pre-cancel album, uh, they open it up, what are they looking for? Is it just the certain bureau issue with the bureau pre-cancel on it? Specific towns or...? Kind of all of the above. I mean, it could be any of those things. <clears throat> the, probably the problem is... Um, you need a catalog. If yeah. you don't have a catalog, you really can't figure anything out because they all look the same. And you could go by the size of the town but or the age, but that doesn't really tell you anything because there are some small towns that use a lot of pre-cancels. Mm -hmm. So it, without a catalog, you're really kind of lost in the dark. And I think even dealers, um, that's one of the frustrating parts of, of pre-cancels is when you go to dealers, they really don't want to deal with them because they they have to know all this information that they don't really have time for. And they kind of know that it's a it's a hunt in the dark. You know? Yeah. It, it seems like you're either uh, fully committed 100% in or you just have a box that you maybe toss them into whenever you come across. It seems like there's no one <laughs> right. who's, exactly. um, you know, there's no one who kind of likes pre-cancels. <laughs> it, uh, it, it, that's true. at least my impression. <laughs> yeah. Now, now there are, so that, to answer your question in more detail, there are, you know, individual bureaus that are worth a lot just by the pre-cancel that's on them. So there are some very modern ones like prominent Americans that are worth, you know, in the thou a couple thousand dollars because there's so few of them. And, and completing a bureau collection, it's really not difficult to get to about the last 10. Mm -hmm. There are 10 that are worth more than a thousand dollars and they range from early, you know, issues to the late sixties and seventies. So. Of course, the, the most expensive um, pre-cancel isn't really because of the pre-cancel. It's because of the stamp it's on. 596 Scott, you know, is a rare perf variety rotary press that, you know, has been found on a lot of Kansas City bureaus. Mm -hmm. It's just dumb luck that run of the press, they switched the perf, perf gauge out. Of. Hmm. So... One thing I had heard about um, rare bureaus is that some of them are rare because they were used on bulk mailings where they actually sealed the edge of a, um, uh, I think it was a church pamphlet or something. So the stamp was inherently damaged and torn when that mailing was opened. It, you know, do, did a lot of these experience, and, and just with bulk mailing in general, did these experience lower survival rates than other stamps may have because of the type of mail they were put on? Probably yes, because th so there's one from Phoenix City, Alabama. That's from the that's 50s. the one I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah, that's there's only two of those. One was found this year, actually. Um, the second one. Um, I remember reading an article in Linz about how that was probably the the m rarest U.S. stamp in terms of rarity. I mean, that's the thing with pre-cancels are. They're pretty, the rare ones are really rare, but there aren't that many collectors. So you're not gonna get the prices of say a 596 or the compound perf 
varieties where, you know, there's thousands of people looking for them, you know, the demand is much higher, but you're right. I think in that case, it, that might be because it's the right era and not with the right rate. So. I was, I was going to ask that I've seen a lot of inverted pre-cancels. Does that add to the value of the pre-cancel at all? So not really in most cases. Okay. Um, actually, pre-cancel collectors don't even, most of them don't care. For hand stamps, they don't care because the person doing it could have just mm -hmm. turned it any way. Yeah. And you'll often find, you know, weird ones there. With printed pre-cancels, people do collect those and that inverts can be worth more. But again, there's... The thing about the pricing on locals is the price in the catalog is for the cheapest variety. So you have to judge it against hmm. what stamp it's on. Is it inverted or a double or a lot of things that take experience and time to learn. So, but generally speaking, they're not worth more because a lot of times they would put whole, whole sheets through upside down and they didn't care. And yeah. It was just bad workmanship, I guess. So. When, when you sell, what would you say the breakdown is people who are trying to collect one of everything versus people who are trying to collect maybe their state or a particular stamp issue? What is the, um, uh, you know, is the, or and I, I guess is a more general question. Is there a right or a wrong way to collect pre-cancels? <laughs> well, the longer you collect, you learn there's no wrong way to collect stamps. You know, you'll hear people say you should do this or you should do that. And really, everybody has an opinion, but there's no wrong way to collect pre-cancels. And that's one of the nice things about it is there are so many ways. I mean, we have on the website, we have a page dedicated to different ways you can collect pre-cancels. Now, like I said, there's the typical path that people take, you know, bureaus being the first probably or people like to collect their town or their state or their county, you know, because they know and, and it kind of keeps it in a box because it's such a big world. Um, and like you said, you know, you don't just haphazardly start. You know? <laughs> I mean, you might start that way, but that's yeah. generally. So, um, yeah, I think I answered your question. But... So we see a lot of, when I get a, an album that's, the, you know, this this thick, you know, it's three inches thick or so. It's filled with pre-cancels. We, we list an album like that. We People who, who buy this, are they buying it to keep it or are they buying it for a hunt? Are they looking for a specific pre-cancel that's more valuable than the rest? Um, it, are they just accumulating mass pre-cancels or are they searching for a rare variety? Well, everybody searches for rare varieties, but that's probably not why they're buying that one, unless they saw it, you know, in the book when they were looking. Mm -hmm. Usually, there are a few people in the society who can tell they know every single type and how much it's worth, believe it or not. But that's most people, there's too many, and it's hard to know that. So usually, it's they, they're looking to fill fill their collection, you know, if it's looking for bureaus, maybe, and all of those that they need are looking for their state, you know, that one of the ways, if you're selling them, it's good to break them down by state, because a lot right. of people collect by state. Um, also, people collect by issue. Um, Washington Franklin's is a very popular area. Another popular area is dated. So, at one in 1938, the post office said that if you use a stamp over, I think, seven cents, six or seven cents, you had to put the your initials of the user and the date, month and year that it was used. So people collect those because which in it's funny because pre cancel collectors look down their nose at those for, you know, 80 years, I think, except for a few crazy people. So um Anyway, that's a popular area as well. All right. Well, Mike, thank you for for joining us, talking to us about pre-cancels. The main takeaway that I'm hearing here is if you find a pre-cancel collection, 
buy a catalog. Um, <laughs> do you just real, real quick, um, what catalog would you recommend? So they're available at precancels.com. Okay. This web page. There's kind of two catalogs that are the primary catalogs that, you know, have 95% of the information that you need. And that is the bureau catalog and the PSS town and type catalog. Perfect. And then nowadays we, people also use the database. We have a database that runs on windows that you can use to track your um, pre cancels your collection and it's you can carry it around on your computer and people are using that more and more so those great. are the two main ones great and, well, and, and 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 just one request can we do another if it's all right with you mike another conversation like this at some point to talk about these things <laughs> perfect sure. yeah i, yeah, I, I, I people I, confuse the them with pay cancels i, I don't know I, why I, I, they're totally and, and they served a totally different purpose. But if mm -hmm. you wouldn't mind joining us again at some point, we'd love to do a, again a similar crash course for people in um, in, in Perfect, if that's all right with you. Yeah, that'd be great. fantastic. Great. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for taking the time out to meet with us. And this You're has welcome. been this has been great. Yeah. Thank you, and we'll we'll talk, uh, to, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, just let me know. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. That was great. I again, I like pre canceled. I have, you know, selfishly, I have a, a little collection on the side. So um, uh, I'm not going to tell anyone what I collect because I might drive the prices <laughs> way up. Um, as if anyone can't, anyone who knows me can't guess what I collect. But I thought that was fantastic. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed having him on. And, and let's do something similar for Perfins, which are, I don't really see how they're similar, like Mike said, yeah. but people seem to confuse them. So I, I would love to do another one clarifying what a Perfin is and why you shouldn't just toss those out either yeah that'd be fantastic um though yeah that i mean i just mirror your sentiment there that was that was great i liked uh, having him and we should do more of these crash courses in general absolutely um, Absolutely. i like these hyper specific focus where it's yeah, just one yeah. one thing and getting a little bit of his backstory too yeah um, i didn't realize he was dealing full-time now that's awesome that he could retire and, yeah. and get to do this um you know around the clock so exactly awesome well, for people who want to listen, we're on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Podbean, Google Podcast. Google Podcasts. Podbean. Yeah. Uh, our email is flatterlypodcast at gmail.com. And, and our website is yeah. flatterlypodcast.com. And we will put all the information that he talked about, the yep. precancel.com, everything like that, in the description. It's a great forever. website. I, yeah. I refer to it a lot. And, and the catalogs are fantastic. I'm so definitely going to get me, so, get me one of those link in description <laughs> absolutely we're real well, youtubers now yeah yeah well um until next time charles i will uh have a, have a good one until next time have you a too. good one <laughs> thank you for youtube talk soon bye